Welcome back to the Project Gen X Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Alan Smith, along with... I am Big Dave. You <laughs> caught me right in the middle of eating a gingerbread cookie. That's fine. Uh, we were actually uh, mm. we were getting ready to record a different episode, and we got to talking about some stuff that's going on um, in the uh, the pop culture landscape. And we decided, hey, you know what? Maybe we should just start talking about this on <laughs> a microphone. Yeah. Um, you know that that's one of the things with this with this podcast. We generally try to do what we call evergreen episodes, where you can kind of go back. They're not really tied to a a, a you a know time. a time, you know, a year that kind of stuff. Mm. But sometimes some things happen, uh, like what happened this week, where Warner Brothers announced that they are going to start streaming. Well, they're going. Oh, sorry, that gingerbread cookie. Got me. <laughs> you all right? Excuse me a minute. Hang okay. on. Time out. Sound effect here. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, well, all right, so tell us, Warner, you, you, you can probably articulate this better than I can at this point, so go ahead. Warner Brothers had come out with an agreement with some of the movie theaters that are still AMC. AMC. N- n- namely, is that AMC is the only large movie chain that's still open right well, now. No, there's evidently my wife was reminding me there's also a West Coast company called Malco or know. something okay, like okay, that. Okay, that's fine. Uh, Regal, because because Regal Regal's basically shuttered. Well, when when um who who has the James Bond now? It's not MGM any longer, is it? Um whoever has the the, the company that has the 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 James the uh, the James Bond, the 007 stuff, when they basically announced that they were not going to release it in November for like Christmas. But yeah, or, or that was when Regal said, "Okay, we're we're just shutting it down until March of next year." Um, and but AMC has hung on. Now they've been showing, you know, some some smaller release stuff as well as they've been showing a lot Metro of Metro Golden Mire. It is still MGM. Okay, yeah. I wasn't sure if they. If they I couldn't remember if, if MGM was still. I, basically, James Bond is the only thing that's keeping them their their movie studio. Yeah, open, open at this now. point. Um, but yeah, anyway, so yeah, so, so Regal's Regal shut their all their doors. We until don't know, March. Th- well, supposedly, we don't know if they're coming back yeah. or not. AMC was really the only one that was staying functioning, but they were showing a lot of older movies. Right, they were renting out spaces. Right, you know, where you and could, they they came out and said we don't have enough cash. Yeah, to make it through the end of the year, basically. Yeah. So, which is kind of one of those. Why don't you just go ahead and shut down? And well, you know, Warner Brothers so. when they got ready to release Wonder Woman 1984, they did some paperwork with AMC that this was going to be a one time thing where they did a simo release where they would put it out in the theater, but they would also send it to I think it was HBO, it's HBO Max. HBO yeah. no H is it HBO it's Max? HBO Max. Yeah. yeah. Because Warner Brothers has a deal with HBO, like they they have yeah. all of their movies and stuff on there, an exclusivity deal, and right. not. I forget how long it might have been two weeks, but but this week they announced that they're going to release, that they're going to simo release their entire twenty twenty one movie releases both in the theater and right. on HBO Max. And AMC has basically said, we're getting ready to sue you. Right. Which is Wonder Woman 1984, Matrix 4. Um, there's like a list of 10 there, There's or 12. a whole bunch it's of movies. I mean, it's yeah. A huge and high profile movies. movies. They're not just like, oh, we're, yeah, we've got all these little movies that we don't, you we're know. We're talking about summer blockbuster stuff, right. Christmas blockbuster stuff. Stuff that was supposed to have been out this this past or this year right. that, that kept, that got bumped. Um, I, um, I can't. I could probably pull up the yeah. list of because it is. It, it's. It's. I want to say it's about ten very prominent yeah. movies. Um, but the that, thing we've seen with movie theaters over the last few decades is they basically all the movie theaters, with the exception of a few local owns, are all owned by two or three companies. Right. And I think even like the guy who owns iHeartRadio was in the process of buying out one of those companies so he could solidify or actually consolidate a bunch of stuff into one company and like own like over half the media or something Mm -hmm. at some point. And we were talking about, we don't think the big corporate stuff is probably going to last. It's probably going to go back to small locally owned um, movie theaters. And I was telling Alan that I actually miss, you know, having the big movie house on the town square, you know, small town feel, you know, to where you've got, you can do movies in there. You can do music venue right, in there. You right. can do town hall meetings in there. It's more of a performance space than it is just a movie theater. Okay. Um, 
A movie called The Little <clears throat> Things. It's a Denzel, Denzel Washington movie. Uh, Judas and the Black Messiah. Um, Tom and Jerry movie. Which is, it's an animated Tom and Jerry. Yeah, that's for the kids. Uh, Godzilla vs. Kong. Oh, I forgot about that one. Which I'm actually looking forward to that one. Mortal, the Mortal Kombat movie. Yeah. Both of those are supposed to be summer. Mm-hmm. Those Who Wish Me Dead. Um, Who was that? Um, uh, it's an adaptation of Michael Coriata's neo-western novel of the same name. I don't know. I, I, yeah, it's something. That sounds interesting. Uh, the Conjuring. The Devil Made Me Do It. And the the oh, next movie in that. Another Conjuring. Uh, in, Yay. In the Heights, um, which is... It's an adaptation of uh, Lynn Manuel uh, Miranda uh, stage musical. It's the same people that did uh, Hamilton. Oh, okay. Uh, so it's a stage musical that they're they're doing. Okay. Um, uh, Space Jam, the new Space Jam. Oh no, is one of them. No. Suicide Squad, the new Suicide oh, Squad. That's is right. One. Yeah. Uh, Reminiscence. It's a Hugh Jackman movie. I don't know. Let's see. He, he's doing all his musical stuff now that he's gotten mm, rid of the Wolverine yeah. claws. Malignant. Um, it's a horror movie by James Wan. Wasn't there a Michael Bay film? Uh, Dune. Oh, Dune was, was, one, was of one of them. That was going to be a huge... Uh, because I've seen a lot of the previews for the new Dune, and it looks spectacular, honestly. The Many Saints of Newark, which is a prequel to The Sopranos. Ooh. Yes. Um, King Richard. It's a Will Smith movie. Okay. It's about... Um, I think that's the one... Oh, it's about Richard Williams, which is uh, Venus and Serena Williams' dad. I think that's the one that he he went to film that one, and that's the reason he's not in the new Suicide Squad, but they left it open for him to reprise that role yeah, later on so. down the road. Yeah. They're, Let's see. They're bringing in... I forget, they're bringing in Eld- Eldris... Eldris, uh, uh, Id- Idris Elba. Yeah. yeah, I forget what role he's playing. Let's see, Cry Macho, which is a Clint Eastwood movie. Um, <clears throat> the Matrix Four, obviously. Yeah, and that's it. That that's all of them that they've they've announced. So there's a there's a handful of them in there that I actually will will watch. Um, I'm not looking forward to paying 15 bucks a month for HBO well, Max. I get it. I get it with my uh, cable, or not with my cable, but with my. Uh, I have uh, AT and T uh, gig internet, oh. and I get it with that. So, well, just be prepared for me to you know, <laughs> me and the wife to be showing up over here on the weekends yeah. to watch. So watch that movies. that's been kind of you know kind of nice having that. Uh, <clears throat> of course, it wasn't until last week that HBO Max finally reached a deal with. Uh, was it Roku? Roku and. Um, yeah, finally. Um, a fire, uh, fire TV, and fire so, which I have a fire, fire TV stick. I've got a Roku, and so that's finally one of those things where oh no, I can finally stream it on my television. I don't have to like stream it on my tablet or phone, you know, yeah. type stuff. Which I don't mind watching it on my my iPad so much. Well, you know, it kind of depends on what it is. You so. could streamcast that to your TV. Yeah, yeah, I could. Uh, I just never got around to it. Yeah. Uh, honestly, the only thing that I've watched on HBO Max so far. Which I've only had for just about a month and a half now, I guess maybe two months. Uh, was the um, the Fresh Prince reunion? Oh, okay. Which was actually pretty pretty good. Uh, they, I mean, they brought back everybody. They had <clears throat> they had both. How'd they get Uncle Phil there? Well, they didn't have him. <laughs> I was obviously. like, that's a little morbid. Yeah, obviously James Avery wasn't there, but they had everybody else. Um, but they had both. Um, I'll tell you what, at and one, Vibs. At, at one point during the pandemic, uh, Will Smith was starting to look like Uncle Phil. <laughs> uh, did you see those photos? I didn't know. Yeah, he no, he, he, some, he, he plumped put, up. He huh? put on some weight and had yeah. a beard and it had white in it and yeah. the bald head. Well, he he kind of yeah. looked like Uncle Phil for a little hey, bit. Hey, you could do worse, man. James Avery was a great actor. Yes, he, he was. was a great actor. Yes, he was. And um, you know that's um, he did so much more outside of just the Fresh Prince. You know, than uh, he was he was always good every yeah. time. Uh, but yeah, that was that was a lot of fun to watch. But yeah, the, the whole thing with the, the movie theaters is um, I I have you know I have friends who are very avid about going to theaters, which I'm not as I, much. I used to be one. I used to love. Okay, I love going to the theater. I love the I love the experience of going having to go in right and get your overpriced 
food and way overpriced. You know, stuff. your twenty dollars six ounce Coke and all. You know, some of that was ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Um, but I enjoyed actually going into the theater, right? Finding my spot in the middle of the theater where you know I pulled a. I didn't do the whole Sheldon Cooper thing where I was going around going, Whoo! you know, I tried right, to, right. But yeah. I knew about where the sweet spot right, for the right. audio was, and just waiting for the lights to go, to right. go down and in, enjoying that actual experience. But when it got to be fifteen bucks a pop, yes, to go to the movie theater, this is the same reason I quit going to concerts. Yep, I wasn't willing to pay the price that they're trying oh, to I'm, extract from you. You know, when when Movie Pass became a thing, yeah, and I had I was a member um, until it went, you know, it not before until it went belly up. I was a member until they changed for one weekend. I went to go to a movie and I couldn't because they had started limiting what movies, yeah. you know, and I was like, okay, this is where I, this is where I'm done, you yeah. know? Uh, but that was a lot of fun because I have many times said that as much as I enjoy going to the movies, I don't require going to the theater to see every movie. No, there are plenty like, you know, you know, yeah, whatever new, you know, sci-fi or or superhero movie or whatever it is that, that comes out, I would like to see that on a big screen. Yes. Uh, now, in saying <clears throat> that, in saying that, that does not mean that I have to go see it in 3D no. or in IMAX no. or any of that stuff. I just need to see it on a big screen. Yeah. Okay. The with with the the Dolby Atmos. Yeah, that's yeah, that, that's fine. Sound. And, the, I like. I'm an audio guy. I know. So I, you know, I know. we I, all know you're a nerd. So it's I'm a geek. You know, <laughs> I, I do AV for a living. I, you know, not just with the video. Good video isn't anything right. without good audio. Now, you know, and I am. I was always. I'm not so much. I'll explain why in a minute. I was always the guy that when you're going to a movie theater would be sitting at the on the very back row. Mm-hmm. You know, I go to the movies by myself quite a bit more than I go with other people. And I, I'm not ad- adverse to going with other people. It's just usually when I decide to go to a movie, I'll go to I'll go to like the nine o'clock movie on a Tuesday or yeah. something. You know, just as like, oh hey, I'll well, go check this. You know, check this out. You know. As I've gotten older, I've gotten to where I don't sit in the back of the theater by myself any longer because it just looks creepy. <laughs> <laughs> you look like Pee Wee Herman sitting back there. There you go. Funny story about that. Oh, no, uh, no, no, no. No, not about, well, no. Our, our friend Brody, which we've, we've talked about on here yeah. several times, and it was funny because uh, it was not long ago that it was the 20th anniversary of this film being released. And I, I texted him, and he was like... Oh, yeah, I remember when we went to go see that. And, of course, we got a good laugh out of it because the movie Bring It On, you know, the cheerleading movie with Kirsten Dunst. You went to Dunst, go see that in the theater? Brody and I went to go see it together. And we went <laughs> to the we went to the theater, and it was like a matinee showing. Yeah, so it's like a 2 o'clock you know, in the afternoon type thing. Oh, no. And we walked in. <laughs> we walked in, and we were both in, like, our late twenties, you know, like we were both like, we were like 26 or something, you know, it was like when it came out. Uh-huh. And so we walk in and we sit down and we're, in the, we're the only two, first off, we're the only two guys in the theater. It wasn't packed, but there were enough people there yeah. where it's like, Oh look, there's a lot of teenagers and their moms here. Mm-hmm. And I remember like us sitting down and I'm just like, wow, we look like perverts right now. Don't we? <laughs> Did you leave the seat between you open? No, or did you no, sit right next to each that. other. Now, funny story about that. Uh, another that came out twenty years ago, the movie Loser. Yeah, you know, Jason Biggs, Mira Savar, you know, yeah. you know. And the thing is, that was one of those movies that the commercial, like the the trailers and everything, made it into something like it was going to be another like you know, kind of like American Pie esque, you know, yeah, you know, teen sex comedy, basically, you know. Andy and I went to go see that movie together and we're sitting there and we got maybe, maybe 20 minutes into the movie and there was just something that happened and both of us simultaneously looked at each other. We we both realized this was a date movie (laughs) and we simultaneously looked at each other and both of us stood up and took and like went one one seat over. <laughs> it was just like, oh man, we got duped oh, on this one. All right, so it's <laughs> that's great. Oh. So, yeah, you know, but you know, we telling these stories, but you know, the the the, the movie going experience I have always enjoyed. Yeah, 
What I do not enjoy is the modern movie going experience. Oh, I know. Well, I have. If, I cannot. All right, look here. Here. Okay. They, they killed the spontaneity of going to a movie, or or possibly going to see a couple movies. You know. At a time. Right. The, with the whole reserve seating crap and the recliner I don't, I crap. I don't mind that stuff so much because it is a, I know where I'm sitting. I don't have to worry about if I get up to go to the bathroom, whether or not my seat's going to be taken or, you know, or even, you know, like, well, we got to hurry up and get in there and grab a seat before they're all filled. So, yeah. you know, so, it, so it's one of those things where you go I, I and then you know, it, it, it gives you a little extra to go go to the concession stand or whatever it is. You know, like, hey, I know where I'm going to be sitting. This now, the thing that I don't like is um, I have the the Regal, um, the Crown Club, you know, whatever you yeah. know. And again, it's kind of like the movie pass where you pay a certain amount. I think I'm paying like twenty one dollars a month or something. I can go see as many movies as I want to during that time. I can even see you know the same movie over. I, I could go see the same movie every day if I wanted to with this thing, you know. Yeah. And it's and of course with that, I'm always like, hey, I see two movies a month. I've paid for this thing. Yeah. No problem. You know, I've more than paid for it. You know. <clears throat> and I'm fine with that. Plus, you get discounts on you know on everything else. You know. Yeah. And you build up points, and you know that's. It, it's kind of. I, I, I was enjoy a member it. of the Regal Crown Club when it used to be free. Well, yeah. Well, I was too. But this was, the, and it, and it still is because you still like when you go and you buy stuff. You still like you'll know, you'll like accumulate points. But they added this. It's the Crown Plus or whatever it is. Yeah. So where it's where it's it's basically Movie Pass is what it is. Yeah. You know, uh, you know AMC has their uh, was it the A listers or whatever it is. You know, and uh, they, they they've all kind of after Movie Pass went away. Yeah, they kind of like okay, well we can do this, we can do you know whatever. The biggest problem I have now with the modern thing is none of that stuff. It's the other people, honestly. I cannot tell you how many times I've been sitting in theaters in a theater and enjoying a film and the person in front of me all of a sudden open up their phone and start texting or something and it's like you get this light yeah. all of a sudden, you know, or or you know, or answering a phone call. Yeah. Which again, who <laughs> this is gonna say who actually talks on their phone these days for one thing, you know? <laughs> but to answer it in the theater in the middle of in the middle of a movie is even worse, you know. Well, and I still talk on my phone okay, because yeah. <laughs> it is a phone. I know. First I know. and foremost, like I said, I know. I Two, know. I shut my phone off in the movie theater because it's mm-hmm. the correct and moral thing to do. Absolutely. You bunch of idiots. Exactly. I agree. So it's one of those not having to deal with all of that, plus the advent of, well, my television. You know, I have a pretty good, decent. I've got a fifty-five inch TV. You know. Yeah. Granted, it's not movie theater size but it's still pretty decent and i've got a pretty decent sound you know sound yeah. system with it so it's like why wouldn't i want to just stay at home and not have to deal with other people and not have to spend another 25 30 dollars on yeah you know concessions or if i want to get up and go to the bathroom i can punch balls, balls yeah. and not have to worry about you know well, I, I was talking to miss day and i was like you know if this is the way things are going to be from now on right i i, I still enjoy going to the theater but if everything's going to be streaming at this point, mm-hmm. I'm going to start dropping some serious coin to upgrade my home movie. Oh, I'm, yeah, exactly. I mean, that's uh, you know, I'm going to upgrade my 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 AV centerpiece, the, right? You know, the the stereo tuner with all the inputs and all that. I'm right. Gonna upgrade my speakers. I'll probably do a better TV. Uh, yeah, yeah, ex- ex- exactly. And that's the thing I've looked at, especially with 4K. Yeah, you know, that's that's a whole thing. I'm not somebody who oh I got to have the newest and, and best you know but no, the thing is I I've, want quality if I get to the point to but where I don't need to fanboy it, right it but once it gets to the point to where we're we're streaming in actual 4K yeah. why not just go ahead and upgrade to a 4K television and well, that right, way it's right now a, I could stream in 4K because I've got the 4K Roku yeah and they've got an entire selection on there that's just right 4K right right so what I'm not there yet. Which I'm not either. Of, I'm, so I'm just like, there's no use in dropping that extra money when the prices come down, and they will. Actually, because they always are, do. Prices are already coming well, down. When honestly. they come down a lot more, I'm fine with it. Of course, now they're talking about 8K. And I was like, look, there's one thing you need to understand about the human body, about our senses. We can only see on a certain, in a certain spectrum, no matter what. 
and no matter, you know, and it's one of those things we're starting, the 4K is already pushing the limits of what we can actually see without some kind of, of, uh, of, um, uh, apparatus to, to help in that situation. Okay. That's the thing that I also, that's the thing I also have with, uh, with audio. You have to remember humans, our spectrum, our hearing spectrum only covers a certain, well, from 20 to 28 K. Right. And it's one of those things that inside but of that, it is also actually can hear. And you, you most people can't. Here, though, that's the thing. Here's the the AV geek in me. The higher resolution that you either record mm-hmm. or shoot in, especially in digital, right? The easier it is to downgrade it to the right. system. Well, I that understand you need. that. I understand that. So it's not it's not as easy the other way at all. No, you, no, it, it, there is no, no at all. I know. That's so a, even if they're shooting at 8K. It doesn't matter what TV you're on below that. Mm-hmm. It's still going to look better. If they recorded a higher resolution, if you recorded a higher resolution, what you're doing is you're actually getting more. Oh, what was it? I just was reading about this. <laughs> you want to know all this stuff. Isn't it? You're, I, I a, you're a resident expert. And... But you ac- you actually get um, a wider frequency. Spe- it's, right. It's actually sampling higher and lower on the frequency spectrum. Right. So you're actually getting more of the audio. But it takes more storage, you know, to... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Much, yeah. much higher um, 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 files, file right. space, you know, the, the bit rate and everything. So it's... But the more times you can sample the thing, the better it's going to sound because the closer it's going to be to an actual analog wave than, you know, the not... So you're saying digital is not better than analog? <laughs> <laughs> Digital is better. It's better. It's lossless. I know. It, it's lo- You can have it either in lossless or right. in a, a you know completely raw format. But analog is naturally going to sound better to you because it's natural. Because it's a natural wave. Right. There's no break in it. it. It's it's hard to. It's no. It's the difference between okay. Here's 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 a and I, this may fall apart because I'm kind of putting it together, but it's the difference between if we walk into my house right now, and you went into, into the den, yeah. and you hit a note on my piano, yeah, and hearing it right there with the natural, um, the natural harmonics and the yeah. natural uh, acoustics in the room and all that kind of stuff, yeah, as opposed to taking that, converting it to ones and zeros, yeah, and then trying to make it sound exactly like what we're already getting naturally now today's technology has come, gotten better has, has i know gotten really good at being able to do that depending on how high of a resolution and bit rate right, you recorded right. at um but the higher the higher bit rate and you know now, resolution that you record or you videotape something at mm-hmm. the better you're able to actually reproduce that on now one thing that i've always said about um you know with this we're going all over the place on this one again the with like vinyl yeah okay I I I like vinyl. I do too. Okay, but it's a nostalgia thing for me, though. But here's the thing: when I was when I was had gotten back into vinyl, yeah, which I actually just bought a new vinyl. Yeah, I knew you were coming back. <laughs> I've still got your record player, by the way. It's okay. I, I've got a new one. You can't have uh, me. <laughs> what? What? This is new news. Yeah, you bought a new one. No, I got it from my grandmother's. Uh, um, it was it was in her house. I, I didn't even know. I, I it, it's is it tube. Is it tube? Is it part of a tube system? Uh, it's it's something. I'll I'll tell you about uh, it later. Okay. But it's one of those things that the now the other day I was at uh, Great Escape over from Charlotte and I was I was like I don't need to do this but I'm gonna go over here because they had gotten some Bowie stuff in a little while back you know you and so come I'm into like, my side of town and not calling and me. so I'm like looking through I'm like okay yeah I don't yeah I don't really want that and you know blah 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 blah, blah. oh look the Buzzcocks <laughs> 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 oh look. This is a 1978 pressing. Yep. I'm buying this. <laughs> yep. I knew you'd be back. And it's stuff like that. You know, it, yeah. it, it really is a lot of like like late 70s and very early 80s punk and, you know, new wave, you know, or, you know, yeah. glam rock or whatever it is that I'm kind of like, okay, I can, I can, I can justify buying this because this was all recorded in analog. Yeah. And so therefore probably a two inch tape. Exactly. So therefore it was all mastered for this. Yeah. Which means that we're getting what they were intending for us to hear. Yeah. The problem whenever you the new I don't even know who's a 
popular band now. Um, <laughs> Why I'll be would honest. You, you just sound okay, okay, here we go. Here we go. Uh, so, like, uh, the Black Black Keys, which I like the Black Keys. I like Keys. the Black okay. Keys. Yeah. But the thing is, is that, you know, they go over to Third Man Records here in Nashville, you know, in the, the studio over there and record all that stuff. Yeah. Now, granted, over there, because it's Jack White, they probably have some analog stuff, but they're oh, mastering. Oh, no, they, they totally do have yeah, analog stuff. But I guarantee you they're mastering it all digitally when it, when it comes down to it. So, yeah. therefore, it's made for that digital format, but then they're pressing it on vinyl, and I'm like, okay, see, do you see the problem here? Well, so that's, I'll do you uh, one better. There's okay. a studio um, over close to where I work at called Welcome to 1979, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and that you can still record to vinyl I know, in that studio. I know, I know. Which and that's I think cool. Is really that is really cool. cool. I'm glad that that stuff is. But that's my problem with new yeah. stuff that is being put on vinyl. I'm like, you're not, it, it was never meant to be on vinyl. Yeah. That's the whole thing. Uh, and again, it's kind of like what you're talking about of we recorded it at this in, at, at this much higher bit rate yeah. and this much like But more than cleaner. likely, you still probably recorded it in Pro Tools. Right. Which is sampling. Exactly. It, and then you put it back through another Ex- digital to analog To make converter. it sound analog. Yeah. And it's like, no, I would rather hear it in analog yeah. because you don't have to go through all these extra steps of making it yeah. sound that way. Which so. at, at Welcome to 1979, from what I've seen on their Facebook page, yeah. They can do it on Pro Tools. Right. You, know, you over there, you record the whole thing on Pro Tools. I think they still do two inch tape. I think nice. they've got a guy okay. that's still over there that's an actual engineer that still works on their two inch tape machines. Mm-hmm. And I think you can actually cut one directly to vinyl at this point. That's so, I mean, you know, and I'm fine with that if that's, that's what you cool. want to do. Well, I mean, know? that's keeping the old skills right. alive. Right. And they'll actually teach classes, from what I understand, over there mm-hmm. on how to do some of that. Right. Yeah. And I'm, again, I'm fine with that. Again, <laughs> it goes back to that analog versus digital thing. Yeah. And, and I like, don't get me wrong, I like both. Yeah. I have said that many times. Like, you know, um, let's say, uh, okay, Beggar's Banquet, Stones yeah. album. Yep. Okay. Good album. You buy that on, on vinyl because it was pressed on vinyl originally. And it's going to sound one way. When 8-track and cassettes came along, it sounded differently because they had to it was basically move from one format to another. Yep. When CDs came along, they had to all of a sudden move it from that that two inch tape to that. They had and that's why you would always see these digitally remastered stuff that yeah. started in the mid eighties whenever CDs started, but they're like, Hey, this is the next wave of things. And so therefore it was okay, we gotta take it from this and get it over into this. And it had to be remastered to be able to sound right. Decent, decent on, on the new CD, right? New and eventually format. they got the remastering down pretty well, to be honest. But here's the thing: some of those I, early remasters. Are I have, I have, and, and this was um, Pastor Dave when he was in town a couple of years ago, and he was asking me, he's like, "So what is it exactly?" You know? Yeah. And I have said, and this this was my going back to vinyl, and and having my rules, my own personal rules about I'm not buying anything older than a certain yeah. year because at that point pretty much everything had, had moved over to digital you know is everything was mastered for this when they put it on cd it changed yeah and not only did it change they kept messing with it and they kept going back and remastering it and they kept going back and remastering it, and they kept going back and remastering it. and for most of our well all of our adult lives we have been hearing stuff that was originally recorded in analog for vinyl that has been made, quote unquote, perfect in remastering. Yeah. And if you go back and listen to it on vinyl, it sounds different. It might not be completely different, but it's markedly enough to where you're like, wait a second. I don't ever remember hearing this little thing. And it's because all of that stuff was taken out when they remastered it. Yeah. And that's the problem. It's like, I don't want to hear perfect music. Perfect music. Rock and roll is not meant to be no. perfect. Music in general is not meant to be perfect. No. Okay. Unless you're doing techno or something like that. I mean, go, and that's all digital. I mean, let's yeah. be honest. And that's not a slag on techno. It is. No, this is, this is a, this is a lab creation here is what this is. Okay. Yeah. You know, uh, I love Nine Inch Nails. Okay. I always have, but that's the whole thing is that, you know, Trent Reznor, is a computer coder more than he's a musician. It's <laughs> Starting out, I would agree with you. Yeah. That has changed over I know. time. Though. The stuff that he's done with um, Atticus, um, uh, what's the guys? They, they've done all like they did like the social network and all this stuff that they've done, yeah. you know, like all these movie I scores really, and stuff. I really like the thing that he did with uh, Josh Holm and uh, Dave Grohl um, for the, the sound studios. 
album. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I mean, come on. And they and they it was just literally those three sitting in the studio just trying right, well, stuff until they found something. You know, that, that and that's together. you know, I I talked about um Jack White yeah. earlier. And and it's one of those things that I was You remember the you should remember this. I don't know, it's probably Uh-oh. a year ago or something like that. And Corey, who we've had on here before. Yeah. Um were you about to start picking on Chicago? No, again? it wasn't him. It wasn't him. Who was it? It was, but it was one of our mutual friends. I don't remember who it was. It was somebody, and I know Corey had commented on it on Facebook. Had said something about name me one, uh, name me a good band that's got a bad drummer, and everybody's going through. Oh, you can't do it because of blah 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 blah. And I said White Stripes, <laughs> <laughs> and your comment was. You were the only person I know that could find a good band with a bad drummer. <laughs> I, I was actually a little frustrated over the post itself because I was like, this is a total attack on me. I, I totally feel targeted. But the, the, the thing about it, though, wasn't it wasn't about bad drum. It was about, you look, if you, if you have a bad drummer in the band, more than likely the band's not going to be very good. Yeah. I mean, that's just, you know... Uh, and that's not even talking about like styles and stuff. Let's be honest. Meg White is not much of a drummer. Okay, I mean, no, that was even. But that was part of the the shtick of the White Stripes, right? Though. Right. And, and I, I think the thing that hacked me off about that post the most is everybody started piling on on Ringo Starr. <laughs> yeah, and well, it, that's the obvious one to go to. That like, I, I, I will still say he I is know, not a I bad know. drummer. He played what needed to be played for the song. And let's admit it, the guy was playing left-handed look, on a right-handed kit. Look, here's here's the thing with Ringo. You put any drummer in that band with those other three, yeah, those other three like genius musicians, and they're gonna look bad no matter how good they are. It I does, mean, that is now, that is just. No, I am not saying that Ringo does not have a goofy personality. Yeah, I'm not saying he is a bit of a clown when it comes to per- performing. Mm-hmm. But stylistically, the guy is f- solid. I mean, he does what has to be done. Instead of just playing drums, he's having a conversation with other musicians. Okay, if you say so. I, I don't care. I don't, I, honestly, I, yeah. I I have no. I, that's but that is the one that most people go to. Oh, Ringo Starr. Yeah, I agree. Ringo Starr is not a bad drummer. He just he sticks out like a sore thumb amongst those other three guys, you know? Oh. And and so it's kind of like, okay, but when you, in that, you know, hey, let's find a good, like a legit good band with a legit bad drummer. Yeah. Meg White. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not going to... I'm not going to argue with you too much there. <laughs> but it's but it's, but it's one of like I was saying with, with, <clears throat> with Jack White. I've always kind of had like a... I want a contentious relationship with liking Jack White, okay? I get that. Because I do like a lot of his music, and yeah. I recognize the guy is immensely, immensely talented. Oh, very much so. And from all accounts that I've heard, a super, a really super nice, nice. guy if you just run into him on the right. street. Now, I've heard that working with him is a challenge. Well, any, of any musician, any, you know, any musician worth their weight that no. What they want mm-hmm. is going to be difficult to work with. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm, I'm pointing my <laughs> finger. I'm, I'm pointing my finger specifically at you because one, you know what you want, but two, sometimes you can't vocalize what it's it true. is you're it's looking true. for. I agree. I and, agree and, with that, and that's been a frustration in my life over the years playing music. And, of, and honestly, that 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 tension between musicians trying to mm-hmm. figure out what the other one's talking about is where some of so, the jewels come from. Dave and I tried to kill each other one time at a band practice. <laughs> <laughs> we scared, about 20 ish years ago. We scared a bass player completely out yeah, of town. Yeah. And, uh, and, and yeah, then we, we sent, we sent a singer and a, and a, and a bass player to opposite ends of, uh, of a room to get out of our way. <laughs> the bass player packed up and left and has not been seen in the oh, state no. of Tennessee since. Hey, he's in Arizona now. I, I know, told you. A, <laughs> See? He is. Yeah. Michael. Yeah. Well, he moved. It was years later, but it, but it was one of those things that pretty much ended that little yeah. experiment that day. Um, but you know, again, but both of us were very different people at that point. Right. And, and we also, there were outside circumstances. Stances as well, and I still to this day don't remember exactly what was going on. I asked, but you, we did. But we did. I know exactly what it was. I know what it was that. But what led up to it, I'm not a hundred percent sure. Of like coming into that room that Sunday afternoon, I don't remember what it was that we were kind of 
we had, we had kind of been, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? We weren't really at odds, but we had been getting on each other's nerves about something. Yeah. I don't remember what it okay. was. Yeah. And then that was just kind of the, all right, this is it. You know, you know and, I'm playing drums and I can't hear myself. And I'm like, you need to turn your amp down. I can't hear anybody else. Mm. And you'd reach over and turn it up. And I'd be like, you need to turn it down. And I think at some point I finally threw a drumstick you did. at you. You, yeah. you threw one and missed. And then I just kind of looked at you. And I just kept playing, you know, and it was worse. I've, got a, I was I've trying got a bag full of sticks yeah. hanging off of and my so bottom you, tongue. And so you, you grabbed another one just maybe not 30 seconds later and threw, and that one hit me in the leg. And when that happened, it hit I, where I, aimed. I picked it up and chucked it back at your head. <laughs> and and you moved. You saw it coming, you know. And, uh, yeah. And, <laughs> and neither, one, neither one of us quit playing. <laughs> no. I mean, the song's still going on at this but point. But it was one of those things where, you know, it was – you know, you stood up behind the the, the drum stick uh, behind the drum kit, and I grabbed the the stock end of my guitar. It was an SG at the time. I, I was I well, it wasn't. It was that old. Um, um, I thought it was the blue SG. That wasn't no. That wasn't an SG. That was a. Um, oh, it was a Gibson. Um, that was before I bought the SG. Mm. It was a Gibson Sonics. That's what it was. Oh, that's right. And I think it was heavy as everything. And I and I literally like I I had it like a baseball bat. <laughs> like, and I think I was just motioning. As I you know. Come on. It was so funny because Andy and Michael just like hit complete opposite ends of the room from each other, yep. getting out of the way. And then we stood there for about what thirty seconds. And then and I was like, I'm going outside. Yeah. And then I just put the guitar down by slowly or whatever. And it was just like, <laughs> <laughs> and then Dave packed up his drums, his uh, stick bag and left. Yep. And I, we talked to each other for about what a week or something. No, like it was that. a month. Was it that long? It was about a month. It was yeah. a little while. And then one day there's a knock on my door. And I opened the door, and Dave's standing there. It's like, okay, let's try this again. <laughs> no, this is what happened. You can deny it all you want to. All right. Yeah, I'll, I'll do the family-friendly version of it. I opened the door, and we were stood there for about 20 seconds staring at each other. And you go, screw you. <laughs> and I said, screw you. You want to grab lunch? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> And that's the way guys fight. <laughs> no long-term grudges, no whatever. It's just like, all right, fine. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. And we came in, we laughed about it. I was like, I fully planned on tattooing Gibson across your forehead. And you were like, I was fully planning on putting you through that wall. So it was, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and 20 years later, we're sitting here laughing about it. Yeah. You know? I mean, that's uh, that that's the type of stuff that happens sometimes in bands. You know, that was... Uh, yeah, Aerosmith's a great example oh, of that. They're still fighting. They, yeah. They've never stopped fighting. No. I mean, it's always been something with those guys. Um, Oasis. You know, I mean, oh, you, you yeah. got whole kinds of. You know, that's a whole brotherly thing, though. Where I mean, it's like you know, that's you get a into a lot of you level. get into a lot of those those sibling bands. Which I've been meaning to watch that uh, DVD. Dude, you gave I'm me. telling you, you need that. to watch that. So that I got Super Sonic is great. Man. Liam or Noel? No, it, uh, Noel is the talent in that band. There's no ifs ands buts about it. I mean, that's uh, Liam is the voice of Oasis, though. I mean, that's yeah. you know, um, let's put it this way: if if they both came to me and said, I want you to play in my band, I would definitely go with Noel. <laughs> That's <laughs> I, I agree. I totally agree. Now, playing in Liam's band, I guarantee you would be a circus and, and might be worth the stories that come out of it. But Oh, you could write a, bo- oh, a yeah. book after oh, yeah. you through, oh, yeah. but... Apparently, that would be like trying to tour for Axl Rose. Oh God! Well, yeah, that's that's a whole other thing. It's a, yeah. As much as I like Guns and Roses and you know and that kind of stuff, I I I could I yeah. That's that that is one. I was like I I would not want to go on the road with those guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, more importantly, I would not want to go on the road with Axl. <clears throat> I could I could deal with everybody else. I think Slash oh. and, and Duff would be great to hang out with. Yeah, absolutely. But, Axel would just be something else. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know any of these guys. So I, I, I have met Slash before. He was a pretty cool, dude. So oh really? I didn't yeah, know that. yeah. When uh, Slash's Snake Pit uh, back in the when they put their second album out. Okay. Uh, it was um, I can't remember the name of it now. It's a pretty good album though. Um, and it, that was 
2000, 2001, somewhere around in there. Earlier than that. No, this was the second album. Okay. The first one came out in the mid '90s somewhere. Yeah, it was like when like Guns N' Roses. Yeah, it was when Guns N' Roses were kind of on on a break. You know, they were on a hiatus before everybody started leaving the bands and the yeah. band and everything. But that second one, um, that when it came out, um, I uh, that was it was a good album for one thing. But they played um, at three twenty eight Performance Hall here. And uh, I went to it, and they had a meet and greet afterwards, you know. And it was one of those things where you know you didn't get a whole lot of time. Like I've got my, you I go got up, my, you shake a hand, yeah, you get an autograph, autograph, you get, you know, a, get picture, a picture, you, you know, move right. On. But he was just real chill. I mean, he was just like, hey man, you know. And I asked him because it was one of those everybody kind of brought, you know, had brought their um, CD, you know, like the for the, that album, you know, and everything. Yeah. But I brought the insert for uh, Appetite for Destruction with me. I was like, dude, do you mind? He's like, no, not at all, you know. And he like signed the inside of it and everything. Nice. So, so yeah, I've got a copy of a CD copy of of Appetite for Destruction that is signed by Slash, nice. you know. So he seems like he'd be really. Yeah, chill. he was. He he was just real. I mean, just laid back and and everything. Uh, I almost got kicked out of that concert though, because they um they had a um no flash photography Uh oh. and i had a little disposable camera there you with forgot it. to turn the flash I, off yeah and so and it was one of those things where like i was there with andy yeah. and i was in front of him like right on the, the, the barricade you know and slash it right there and i took the picture or whatever and i looked over and i saw security coming over and i just took the camera and like handed it back to him so that it was <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and the guy was like don't do that again and i was like okay <laughs> Yeah, you know, not not like the time you climbed over the barricade and ended up on stage with poison. Yeah, 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 yeah. So. That was uh, I was thinking about that the other day. <laughs> that was uh, that was fun. Uh, cause that was like I had just met Brody and Toad at that point. Yeah, and well, I'd known Brody for a little bit, but um, I'd kind of just I had just met Toad, and we'd really just kind of started hanging out, and so it was one of those things that Toad's the company he worked for had box seats out there like you know there was one area that was for like yeah uh, they had like you, you could get season tickets to concerts at starwood and so they were sitting there and we had we seats had grass down. seats no we were down front at that show uh, that's right that's because right. i had bought tickets like i had actually bought purchased like seats we had like third or fourth row yeah seats. but it was one of those things that when the show started everybody kind of went down to the front you know and so that was one of those that like <laughs> I got up on stage yeah. and then like at late and like Brody has told the story. He was like, Oh look, that's my friend Alan. Like, <laughs> <laughs> of course I was standing right next to you I know. and Brett Michaels at that point, he'd be like, get on stage. I know come everybody on. was trying to like, yeah. I was I, the last one to get over the barricade before they started like making people stop. Oh, I know. You know? I got and my I, fat butt drug back over yeah, the barricade and, uh, and it dumped unceremoniously that was the first on the thing concrete. too was like, as soon as I got up there, I was like, where's Dave, where's Dave, where's Dave? And you're standing right there. <laughs> and we're both like, Hey, <laughs> <laughs> You're such idiots. <laughs> I was like, dude, I could have been up there. I was so mad at that security guard. I was like, come on, you're fat. You can't have a little, little help for Well, the, the problem was, because the thing was, is that I was right there at the barricade to begin with. Yeah. But I couldn't get over it because people kept crawling over me. I, I know, because I picked dude, you up and threw you over the barricade. Well, it, was, it wasn't it was that. It was the, the women that were there yeah. that were like literally like climbing over top of me. To, to get on stage, you know, and, uh, which, okay. But, but it was still one of those things where it's like, no dude, I'm coming over this barricade and I'm getting up there. <laughs> this is, you, <laughs> you got one leg over and I basically grabbed your other leg and yeah. threw you over the barricade and, then, and was on and my way. Literally it was myself. one of those things. Cause the security guard was coming to me yeah. to try to stop. And then I was, I was over at that point and it was just like, all right, you know, but yeah, but that was, you're uh, welcome. Yeah. Thanks. So, <laughs> that's, that is when one of the things that I, that I have many times said, I can say that I sing on the stage at um, Starwood, at Starwood yeah. you know, in front of a, a big crowd, you know, because yeah. it was one of those things where it's like, no, really, I was standing up there with Brett Michael singing rock and roll all night. You know, I mean, that was I, the whole. I just want a, you to remember there are advantages to having a 6'2", 350-pound <laughs> yeah. friend oh, I know. to help you get in places that you wouldn't be able to get otherwise. Mm -hmm. but yeah, that stuff, you know, it... It's funny to go. We, we really we ought to like one one because I, I still have my concert book uh, with all my tickets and yeah. stuff, and we ought to really go through that one time, like we do an episode, kind of going through. What's sad is I don't even know where mine after two, after really three moves, I don't know where my my concert 
scrapbook went. Really? Yeah, I, that's it, it's packed up somewhere, but I don't yeah. know where it, where it went to. And it's funny because it's not just that because I have like guitar picks from a bunch of different. You know, I've got one of Dave Lombardo's drumsticks. Nice from Slayer. Um, you know, I've got um. Oh, I've still got the set list from that Soul Asylum. Oh, yeah. You remember that the dude gave it to me? Candy, uh, from, a Candy from a Stranger. Candy from a Stranger tour. I think I threw you over that barricade, too. No, it, it was because it, it was one of those things. We were, standing right, we were standing right down there at the front, yeah. and the, when it was over, the roadies were like taking stuff down, and he pulled the set list up off because it was taped down. On the, you know, and I was like, hey, 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 hey. And he's like, oh, yeah, here you go. And he's like, all right, cool, awesome. You know, Nice. Uh, you know, I've got my backstage pass from meeting Buck Cherry. You know, I've got different stuff that like Soul that Asylum so. show was actually a little hard on me because we were up on the barricade for I that know. show. it was a standing room only right. type deal and there was like this 12 year old girl that was getting crushed against the barricade God, i know and i basically worked, a hand on each worked, side worked I know. my way over and put a hand on either side of her to keep I the have, crowd off of her i have done that before at concerts where you know somebody got it was in front of, i was like oh no you know and yeah and i'm not nearly as big as you are you know but i'm still keeping somebody from getting crushed yeah i was like that's um, not cool let no, her enjoy not. the show just like everybody I know. else there's I know. no reason for that they were literally trying to bully her back through the crowd to get her out of the way i know I'm like no you're not doing that to her yeah i mean it just it's i've had stuff like that happen you know i was at the <laughs> i was in a mosh pit i don't even remember where it was and it wasn't like a metal i mean it was you know back in the 90s when everybody was mosh into everything uh i know it was kind of ridiculous i think it was it i think it was ever clear at uh, out at uh okay, i at like Starwood. Everclear. that yeah, is I know, not a I know. mosh worthy well, band depends on the song um but it was one of those things there was you know I was like okay and i got into it and of course i got knocked to the, the outside you know of, of or over to the the edge you know where everybody's kind of around and it was so funny because, like, I got knocked over there, and there was this girl, probably, she was probably a teenager. I was, like, in my early 20s, you know, somewhere around 2021, 20, somewhere around in there. Yeah. And there was a teenage girl that was right there that, like, as soon as I, like, kind of, like, landed in the crowd, you know, whatever, she starts throwing elbows. <laughs> I mean, just, like, hitting me with her elbows. I'm like, what the hell? I didn't even hit her. <laughs> just like... <laughs> Somebody hasn't taught her the etiquette of moshing. I was like, you got to be kidding, kidding me, you know? It was just like... Because yeah. <laughs> the etiquette of moshing is not to kick the crap out of Oh, I know. People. I know. It's to help people up when they fall down, you know? it's. A, I mean, that happened to me at the helmet show. We, oh, yeah. I saw a helmet at 328. Yeah. And I was in the middle of the pit, and I went down hard, and three dudes pushed the crowd back and yeah. helped me up, and then got me right back into the pit. Yeah. I mean, it was... <laughs> when I saw Anthrax at 328, I... Again, sometimes you look back on on some choices that you made and you go, what was I thinking, you know? Yeah. And I had this, I I gone, I think maybe Gadzooks or Spencer or someplace like that. And I had bought this bracelet that I was wearing, which I never wore bracelets. I don't know why the hell I had done this. I was in early 20s somewhere, you know? And it had like, you know, it looked like it had these little like... Uh, like they had little rollers on it or something, you know, and they had like little lynch pins in between, you know, everything. Yeah. <laughs> I was wearing it to that show, which today they would never let something like no. that into a show, you know, but back then they didn't, you know, chain belts and all that kind of stuff. I mean, I saw people walk in with, I used to wear a dog collar, like, like a chain, a dog chain, not even a collar and never well, I had, couldn't, you I know. I had that huge wallet chain I know, that hung I know. down to my knee. And so it was one of those things, thing house again, you know, look at them, the choices we make when we're young. Yeah. But I, we were I was at Anthrax, and there's a there's a pit going, and I got knocked into this dude, and this dude had like really long hair. Oh no! And oh, that no. it got tangled up in that bracelet, and it was one of those things where I was just like, I, I did, I literally was like, I'm sorry, dude, and I just yanked, <laughs> and I had clumps of his hair stuck in that bracelet. <laughs> dude, I would have just popped the bracelet and let it. Uh, yeah, it. I mean, it was it was it was like, oh, dude, but you know, stupid stuff like that from. When you're young, you know, the, the ball chains. You remember the ball chains? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, thank you, corn. <laughs> I had that, the big slew of bowling shirts from Hot Oh, yeah, Topic. yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody uh, the other day, one of my friends uh, who was younger than me, uh, she posted something on Facebook. And she was like, uh, what was the name of that store that was next to Journey's? in the mall 
And she's like, I used to buy all my Jinko jeans there and everything. It's like, it's Gadzooks. That's what you're talking about. Yeah. It's like, yeah, believe me, I bought a ton of stuff from that place, T-shirts and everything. Now, the funny thing, Never Corey, anything from Gadzooks. Corey worked there for a little while. You've told this story. This well, is, it's not, yeah. it's not even, I'm not even going to tell that story. The funny thing about it is when Corey was working there, he used his employee discount and bought a bunch of clothes from there, you know, and like he wore those for years afterwards. Like, hey, Corey, I just want to make it. <laughs> known that he called you out i didn't i mean years afterwards <laughs> of like dude that stuff stopped you've never been cool to begin with but all that stuff oh, stopped being cool like I three years ago i can't know? wait for us to have dinner <laughs> together again i love you Corey. you this know that that's right that was hot topic right. because i'd go over and get the bowling shirts and all that but generally, I was too big. I couldn't shop at a lot of those places, so I was having to find my stuff elsewhere and be yeah. more creative with well, it. Well, I was more of a jeans and flannel shirt guy you know, anyway. Even going back to the middle '80s, that was back before grunge and all that. Came yeah, out, yeah. Came well, yeah, let's be honest. The first, well, you, you could go back you know, even further than that, you know, because you, Neil Young, you know, really a lot of that that type of. You know, back in the sixty, or the seventies, you know, and yeah. early into the eighties, but the one that that really brought that stuff into prominence before, even before grunge, was Axl Rose. I was doing it even before. Yeah, that. but I mean, but that I was mean, the I was, I was I was always like work boots or combat boots, right? Or, or Chuck Taylors or Doc Martens, blue jeans, some kind of graphic t shirt and flannel shirt, and probably right. a ball cap. Yeah, and that's all. The, if you go back and watch the the patience video, yeah, actually no, watch the uh, Welcome to the Jungle video. Yeah, the first thing you know when he gets off the bus, yeah, he's wearing he's got a backwards baseball cap and he's got a flannel well, shirt. He's got the do rag on with the backwards right. ball cap, and he's got he's got a flannel shirt on yeah. and he's got jeans and, and cowboy boots, you know, and it's one of those things. It's like which the snake cowboy boots right. with the gold tip on them. Right, I had those years before the the stinking. Guns N' Roses video came out. I had right. those. We're talking circa 84, 85. Yeah. My, I, my um, cousin who mm. worked at Genesco um, saw them and got them for me for like a birthday yeah. gift. Because yeah. they were made by Laredo, which was under the Genesco right. um, company I had umbrella. A, I had a pair of snake skins at one point because everybody did in the late 80s you know, we were in high school because it was yeah. again Axl Rose made them cool you know I mean that was well, I even it. more so before anybody else you know, and, and mine was, were fake snake skin it was the kind oh, of oh no I had real ones yeah, yeah. Now, my parents dropped some money on those things so now working my way through college one of the places I worked at was Acme Boot Outlet oh, which yeah. sold all those all boots all that stuff yep. so you know I had snake skin I had lizard mm -hmm. I had you know I had yeah. all I was I still like cowboy boots I still wear them on occasion because ju they're just comfortable if they're get, not for me if you get a, a good built quality all leather steel shank right. cowboy boot it's once you get the thing broke in it's like wearing house slippers I, they're I great I always had problems with, like, and I wore them for several years you yeah. know like i said because you know i was following twins like everybody else even though i thought i wasn't but it was one of those things i mean and i, I eventually moved on from the snakeskin and just got a pair of like black leather ones yeah. you know and i wore those things forever but it was well, still one wore, of those you wore those engineer boots for the longest time i when too. i went when i finally went to went to doc martens and and the work boots and engineer boots and yeah. that kind of stuff and i stayed in those things for yeah 15 years probably because they were more comfortable for for my feet. Um, yeah. The the cowboy boots never were. They always no. It didn't matter. It didn't matter what how you know what style what yeah. whatever. It was just one of those things that they were always. It was the toes more than anything. That yeah. was always my problem. So I, I usually almost always wore the square toe. Yeah, I, I mean like even even with toe. that, it just yeah. it, it just I don't know. So but. But yeah, now that's and it's funny because you know now of course I'm I'm rocking the Chuck the, the Chuck Taylors. I have been for years now. Yeah, I have, I've, and I I've used always, to wouldn't wear them. I always years have ago, had you know? Chuck Taylors in my closet. Yeah, at some I, point. I that they were not something that I wore a ton until I was probably in my thirties, and then all of a sudden I, I I was like, no, I'm gonna start wearing these things. You know, these are comfortable. These are and you they're know, not expensive, and they're not expensive. I just bought these. And, yeah, and not usually the Converse stores running a buy one get one fifty percent off. Yeah. And I did that because I got my son a pair also for his birthday that's yeah. coming up. So, uh, but yeah, uh, now that we've gone 
all over the map on this thing. <laughs> Welcome to another rambling yeah, episode I know. of the Project uh, we, 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 we talked about potentially doing one of these uh, uh, about once a month, once a month, or whatever, a couple months or something. I didn't expect to do one so close to the last <laughs> one. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it, of course, we started off talking about. Uh, the, the movie, movie theater thing. I don't think the theaters are going away. I, I, I think it's just we're, we are moving into a new model, and it's something that has needed to happen for a while. It needed to yeah. decentralize. Yes. You needed to have a rise of the mom and pop movie theater again. Mm-hmm. And I think you, I'm hoping, I'm, I'm hoping beyond all hope, is that you'll start seeing renovation of some of the small town. The small, like the, the, the one and two screen, yeah. Well, not sometimes even just like the one screen, but it right. seats like 250, 300 people. Right. You know, the movie theaters that were on the town square, you know, that have just been sitting there dormant. Well, as for, people are kind of starting to move away from cities yeah. again, you're, I think you're probably going to start seeing that, you know. it's And not necessarily talking about moving to the suburbs. I'm talking about moving to, like, small towns. Yeah. You're, you're seeing a lot more of that stuff. Uh, and I can't blame anybody for it, to be honest. I keep trying to get you to move uh, out where I'm at. Well, it only takes money. So, <laughs> um, come on, there's probably somebody looking to build like seven or eight oh, I know. tall and skinnies yeah. on this half acre. Yeah, of yeah no property. joke. I'm almost a full acre out here. Oh, well, so. you can get 14 tall and skinnies. Yeah, I know. It's uh, so. Uh, but yeah, a bunch of Yankees. Uh, well, we won't get into that. We're, we're going to stay away from <laughs> politics on this one. Um, we've had enough of that lately, and uh, and I say that lovingly because I I lived up north for a bunch of years. Oh, and I, I have yeah, a bunch yeah, of friends. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so you're backtracking now. Yeah, so yeah, I'm back, yeah. <laughs> I, well, the reason I'm backtracking. So my best friends are Yankees. <laughs> <laughs> That's the reason I'm backtracking is because some of my some of my good friends are Yankees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They refer to so, me as a hillbilly. And, yeah, you know, it's all fair. It's fine. It's love fine. and war. Exactly. Exactly. So, anyways, I am Alan Smith. I am Big Dave, and you can find us on all of the uh, the social medias. We'll have links down in you know in the the show notes on all this stuff. Uh, predominantly, we are under Project Gen X Pod. Yep, um, that's different on Parlor. Uh, we're actually Project Gen X. Which we don't been, have the pod. You, I've been on there quite a bit lately. You're the only one that's posting on that one because I don't have access to it yet. I thought you. I, thought, I don't, I don't <laughs> think gonna, so. I'm probably going to have to go back and try to figure out. I'm logged in on my phone and I can't figure out what the password <laughs> is. So I'm not messing with it at this. I know. I, so, um, but yeah, I mean, it's. Uh, <laughs> I said we weren't going to talk about politics, so I'm not going to. But yeah, that, that's be- all that. I, I I honestly, when we got on there, I was like, oh, well, this is just going to be a different form, a different platform. Now, apparently, it's just a different platform for politics. And but I, I've managed to find a few people who are not 100 percent that. It's so. all it is. It's a new social media. Yeah, it is outlet. It is, and yeah. it's only what it is by the people that's there. So. It doesn't matter what your politics are, you know, come over and join us yeah. and be you can, part, be it's part of the like conversation. Any, it's kind of like anything else. You can find your tribe, even, on, you know, yep. yeah, it's got, whether it's Twitter or Parler or Facebook or Instagram or whatever, you know, we're on all, well, not, we're not on Tumblr, but we're on all that other no, stuff. I, I so. told you to stay away from Tumblr. <laughs> Tumblr's been dying a slow death you for a while. You need to stay away mm. from Tumblr. So anyways, guys, thank you so much. Once again, I'm Alan Smith. I'm Big Dave. And we'll see you next time. See ya.